Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Clever Code. So the problem that we're going to solve today is we want to multiply and accumulate two containers. So uh, what we mean by this is we've got, say, two vectors or two arrays, and what we want to do is a pairwise multiplication of the two arrays, and then accumulate all of those products. So that accumulation we've seen before, actually, and we can look at find odd to see where. So inside of find, find odd, we use this function accumulate. We also briefly talked about a more modern C++ uh, version of this called reduce that is able to paralyze this accumulation. And here, instead of using just adding all the numbers inside of a vector together, we did a bitwise XOR of all the numbers. So we can change this operation as well that we're using for reduction. So our problem is slightly different though, because instead of just doing this kind of reduce operation for a single container, now we're talking about multiple containers. So how do we do this? So let's go ahead and go to multiply and accumulate and look at a couple examples here. So at the very top of our program, we'll have this bad mul accumulate. Now this isn't inherently that bad in terms of performance, right? It's doing no more work than uh, we need to do, unlike some of the other bad examples we've had. It's just a very C style to write this function. So here we've got this temporary variable. We just set it to zero. And then we just have our handwritten for loop that goes from i is equal to zero, i is less than v1.size, i plus plus. And then we just accumulate the product of v1 of i and v2 of i together into temp. So we just accumulate all those products and then we just return whatever the final, uh, the total of the, all that uh, accumulate process is. So what's good about this, what's bad, right? It's not actually that difficult to write, but again, we're using a handwritten for loop and it's a very C style way to write code. We're not really making effective use of say the C++ standard template library. So let's see a better way. So there's actually an exact function that matches this and it's called inner product. So from, uh, uh, this is going to be from uh, numeric, uh, I believe. So here we can go ahead and just use uh, uh, std inner product and how we use it is we pass in the begin and end of the first vector and then begin of the second vector. We don't need to pass an end because the total uh, length of this operation is determined by the first container. It's assumed that v1 and v2 will be uh, the same size. And then we pass in our an initial condition. So we're doing a, an accumulation here. So we'll accumulate into zero, just like we had temp is equal to zero in our bad version. So if you want to be a little more explicit about what this is doing, all right, we're using some default um, arguments here. So here is a, a little bit more explicit of the way that this is called with the default arguments actually specified. So here we've got, um, we've got um, begin and end of v1, begin of v2, zero, and then here we have uh, our function objects that we're using. So we have plus and multiplies, and this is coming from uh, the functional header. So this is just saying uh, we've got two operations. So the second operation multiplies. This says what we're going to do across the container. So we're going to multiply uh, each element of V1 with the corresponding element in V2. And then plus says what we're going to use to accumulate or reduce. So we're going to reduce all these products together using addition, right? And so we can specify whatever we want here. If we didn't want plus, we could have minus. If we didn't want multiplies, we could have divide or we could specify some lambda in here to do something else. And then, uh, but in this case, right, we just want this multiply and then we want to accumulate all of those products. So we can just use the, uh, the default arguments here, right? And that cuts it down to a single line of code that's very clear and easy to read. So can we make this any better? And with more modern C++, such as C++ 17, it turns out that we can. So with C++17, we can use the parallel STL and we can parallelize this uh, inner product using transform reduce. So this is a bit more general than inner product. Uh, and it's we specify two things. We sp specify a transform operation and then a reduction operation. And then we can also pass it an execution fault policy. So let's go ahead and ignore the execution policy for now. And we'll talk about the similarity to inner product. So for here, we pass in begin v1 and in v1 and begin v2, so this exact same as inner product, what we're going to reduce into, so just zero again. And then again, we pass in these two function objects. So we pass in plus and multiplies. And again, just like inner product, the second op specifies what we're going to, what transformation we're going to do. So very explicit transform. 
And then the first opt, this plus, specifies how we're going to reduce. So in this case, we're doing add, but we could do, say, bitwise XOR instead. And then uh, at the very first parameter, we can give it an execution policy. So this is what I said as far as uh, paralyzing and vectorizing. Uh, and transform reduce can be paralyzed and vectorized. And so when we pass in the execu execution policy par, uh, par unsequenced or unseek, this says, okay, try to paralyze this and vectorize this algorithm, right? And we don't have to worry about how it's paralyzed or vectorized. It just happens for free for us. And when we really start seeing the benefits of this is when we have large vectors that we're working with. All right, and so this is our actual use case here. We'll have two vectors, one of them with one, two, three, four, five, the other one with 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. And what we're looking for as an output is the sum of all the pairwise products. So one times 10 plus two times 100 plus three times 1,000 plus four times 10,000 plus five times 100,000. So it should leave us with five, four, three, two, one, zero. And so if we go ahead and compile this, so we'll go ahead and use uh, GCC, so we'll do, or G++, and then we'll set the standard equal to C++ 17 because we're using the parallel STL and uh, these execution policies and transform reduce, which are in uh, the C++ 17 standard. We'll pass in mul accumulate dash O mul accumulate. And in order to use the parallel STL, you also need to link against uh, LTDB, right? Which is lib thread building blocks from Intel. So that's what actually does this parallelization and vectorization for us. And so we can go ahead and compile that and we can run it and we see that they all provide the exact same results, right? But it's different levels of code quality uh, or code clarity, I should say, and actual performance. So in the very first case, we have bad mole accumulate, which, you know, it's a very C style, it works. But again, we're not really using C modern C++. In good mole accumulate, we reduce this to a single line of code, which is very clear. And then with a good mole accumulate 17, we show how we can even parallelize this and vectorize this pretty much for free by just knowing that about the parallel STL and execution policies. All right, so that's a little bit of how we can, you know, perform operations across multiple containers, and we don't need to worry about using, you know, handwritten for loops in order to do this kind of process, right? Especially when we have something as common as a transformation and a reduction, right? And we can specify exactly how we want to transform the data and then reduce the data at the very end. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. All the code for all of these series is located here. If you go to repositories and then clever code, uh, we've got our examples from previous clever code videos such as find odd, maxmin, palindrome, and here we have mull accumulate. So feel free to uh, check this out, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions and as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.